All right, it is time to introduce the topic of chemistry. I love it. And this is just a quick overview and introduction, and hopefully you find it as interesting as I do. So here are the objectives um, based on New York State, science learning standards, um, and math science and technology performance indicators. Okay, so what do you know about question? So fun fact, every time you see that particular question symbol, that means this is a question I'm going to ask you. So think about what you might already know about chemistry. In my case, it's a lot. I'm not going to share yet, but maybe you do know something. You probably do. All right, so what is chemistry? So the definition, the study of matter and how it changes. So the study of matter means like the properties, the composition, the structure, and how it changes. So chemical reactions, physical changes, chemical changes, energy being released, energy being absorbed. There's a whole slew of things that are going to fall under that category. Let's talk about careers in chemistry. So what can you do with a degree in chemistry? Say myself or another science teacher or YouTuber or someone on TikTok inspires you that, hey, actually, I think I want to get a degree in chemistry. What kind of things could you do? Well, you could be a chemistry teacher. Uh, you could be a chemical engineer. So design and develop new products like it could be new foods. It could be new things uh, for industry. It could be new flavors, anything. You could be a forensic scientist. You could analyze evidence at crime scenes. You could be an environmental chemist, analyze chemicals and the impact on the environment. So much more. So these two are links in class. I will share um, more information about what kind of careers that are available in chemistry. And even if your um, major isn't chemistry in undergrad, maybe you want to take some more classes and kind of feel out um, the career possibilities. All right, I'm going to skip the video. So what are chemicals? So I think this word is used in a negative connotation a lot, but literally it means any substance that has a definite composition. It's always made of the same stuff. So water, carbon dioxide, aluminum, polyethylene, that's the most common plastic, that's a chemical. Chemicals make up everything, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the books we read, us. So chemical itself is not and should not be inherently a bad thing. There are some bad chemicals, but literally everything that makes us up is a chemical. What are chemical reactions? Well, they're changes in chemicals. So we need those changes to both grow and also decay. Examples of things that require chemical reactions. So cooking food, striking a match, turning on a flashlight, starting a car. Examples of chemicals that we use. So sulfuric acid, that's a chemical. Um, and a lot of these, again, are given sort of a bad name, but it's used in making fertilizer and metal processing. Ethene, making plastics, ripening fruits. Propylene, right, making plastics. Ammonia, making fertilizer, also in refrigeration. Chlorine for bleaching fabrics, but also purifying water and a disinfectant. And phosphoric acid, making fertilizer, a flavoring agent, and rust proofing. So a wide assortment of things. Okay, let's talk about the physical states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Those are the primary ones. There are a couple others, but we're going to focus on these. So solid. So if I take like this little uh, frame that I have here, I can move it wherever. It will keep it same shape, and it takes up the same amount of space no matter where I put it. A liquid, on the other hand, has a definite volume, so it's 10 milliliters, whether I pour it on the counter, put it in a glass, or put it in a small little medicine dispenser. But it has no definite shape, meaning it's going to take the shape of its container. A gas, on the other hand, has no definite shape or volume, so it is going to spread out and take the shape and fill its container, which also means it's highly compressible, so I can squish it down into a small space by making those particles move closer together. And then we do have plasma. That's a highly energized gas that's lost electrons. And we find that on stars, including the sun, it's covered in plasma. Um, so it becomes ionized. Those electrons kind of become free, okay, to move around. So here you can see the particles moving in a solid, a liquid, and a gas. In a solid, this is vibrating. Liquid, they slide past each other. And a gas, they're going to move about freely and bump into each other and then change directions. What about some changes in matter? Well, important rule to remember, conservation of mass. Mass cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change form. So in physical changes, 
Those include things like changing state. So we could melt ice, dissolve sugar, crush rock, take a piece of paper, rip it into a bunch of pieces. Chemical changes, we get new substances formed. So the reactants are on the left side of the equation, what you start with, the products are gonna be on the right side, and it's what you end with. Okay, so um, there are just some examples you could see um, of uh, changes that occur, a physical change and a chemical change. The lemon, I'm just cutting in smaller pieces, that's a physical change. If I burn the log, that is a chemical change. And uh, here's an example of a formula. So you can see reactants, that would be the CH4 and the two oxygen. And then the products on um, the right side would be carbon dioxide and water. And we're gonna skip this video. And in class, we might have time and play a blue kit. Um, and there you have it. It's a quick introduction to chemistry. Hopefully it makes you just a little bit more excited and hopefully you learn something new.